Hello there, kitties. I'm Kari, the fucking Chibwitch. I forgot about the tube in the last video. And guess what? It's amp building time again. <laughs> Long time no see. So, it's time to resume my work on the Dirty Dozen amp. Today, I will be making the mounting bracket for the filter cap. I will also um, install the potentiometers and maybe some other hardware. So, let's get to the vent. Get some better lighting. And we're at it now. And in order to attach the metal can electrolytic I will need a bracket unfortunately I can't use any typical bracket um, that's uh, available in uh, electronics parts stores especially now that uh, my local electronic parts store is closing down unfortunately so many years they've been They've been around since 1990s and now they are closing down in uh, 2023 after something like 30 years. <laughs> All the time I lived in Gdańsk, I had uh, an electronics parts store right uh, a few hundred meters uh, away from home and now it's gonna be taken away. And they, they even got uh, vacuum tubes uh, in their offer. I also, I also bought some of the hardware for the Dirty Dozen. Then the chicken heads, uh, the potentiometers. Uh, it comes uh, from my local uh, electronics parts store. And now it's closing down. And they will they will be open on on Saturdays uh, until May. And then they are shutting down for good. So what I wanna do is making a mounting bracket for the capacitor. I will make it out of this stainless steel sheet metal. And what I am first gonna do is making a uh, template so that uh, I can uh, draw the shape uh, on, the, um, on the metal and uh, then uh, cut it with, with scissors through the holes and hopefully it will be the right size. So... I'm gonna take some measurements and design the part. First, let's start by measuring the diameter of the filter cap. It's 40 point... 40.4 millimeters. And uh, let me grab some uh, paper and... Uh, and uh, pen to make a drawing of it. My engineering notebook. <laughs> so, starting with the with the, with the design, let's zoom on in so that you can see what I'm drawing right here. That's uh, 40 millimeters diameter, and uh, what I need to do is uh, calculate the circumference, that would be uh, times 3.14. 
Uh, one moment, please. Doing calculations with style. <laughs> Gotta find some power for it. Not sure if I've got any. <laughs> Looks like the power cable <laughs> got lost. Or maybe I can find it. That's 404 on that one. Gotta use a different calculator. I punch those numbers into my calculator and it makes a happy face. <laughs> of course, uh, I'd rather have uh, an, uh, an air gap. Uh, Of something like uh, two, two or two and a half millimeters. So, so uh, maybe let's do 123. That would be the part um, that uh, contacts the, the capacitor. Then I would also have to add uh, the length of uh, of the part where where the um, the screw goes through. So uh, that uh, I guess I would like to have uh, ten millimeters here, and I need the I need it twice. So uh, that would be the the length of the whole uh, band uh, for the mounting bracket. I will also have to place uh, the mounting brackets uh, for the chassis. And uh, in order to do that, I would have to <coughs> divide the circumference by two, by half. That would be one half, that would be the second half. And then uh, I'd rather have uh, those brackets uh, also uh, 10 by 10 millimeters. I can't uh, make them too wide because uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, if I make them too wide, uh, then uh, this would uh, actually not bend. It would uh, it would uh, stay uh, straight. I don't want that, so I will have to go on a uh, compromise. So make those eight millimeters, eight by eight. So, in order to divide the, the circumference uh, by two, so that would be, <laughs> that would be 62.8. And uh, after, after doing those calculations, 
It would be something like like this. This dimension. This would be. Hundred twenty three, two flaps of uh, ten millimeter each. And uh, the the mounting um, flaps uh, eight millimeter. And uh, the width of this uh, of this bracket. Uh, let's make it. Don't make it uh, too narrow. Don't make it too wide. I think that fifteen millimeters will be perfectly enough. So what I have to do now is making a little template. On the on the cardboard, gotta grab a pencil for this. Start by uh, making sure that those that I've got the right angle here, and uh, let's use uh, the upper edge uh, as uh, as the edge for the the whole design. And I will have to measure 143. And by the way, I'm not switching over to Imperial units. It was just a April Fools. where it ends and I can mark 15 millimeters uh, from the edge I can't use this scale because it's a little bit off I better use the ruler so we've got our 15 millimeters and uh, here I will also grab the 50 millimeters. Draw the line. <laughs> Then I will draw uh, 10 millimeters from from the edge for the flaps, from one edge, from uh, from the other edge. Now the 
diagonal lines uh, make the hole where the cross This is where the mounting holes will be placed. And I will also have to make those flaps. In order to do that, I'd rather mark the line for for those uh, eight millimeters. That's on one end. Then it's on the other end. Making it dashed in order to cut, cut uh, on this and uh, not on this. <laughs> so now I will have to divide. Uh, I will have to get the equal uh, distances from here. So here, those uh, those distances uh, summed up should be the same as uh, as this. So basically, one of uh, I've got uh, sixty two point uh, eight uh, between uh, between the holes. So uh, I will have to get uh, 31.4 from the line uh, to the center and uh, from uh, this line to the other center let's make it 31 So uh, this is where the, the centers uh, of the holes would be and since those flaps are going to be 8 millimeters, I will have to mark uh, the left and right side Now let's mark the right angle from the edge. mark the center
so this would be the template for the for the capacitor clamp. Now it's time to grab the scissors and cut it out. And I will probably need an uh, exacto knife on this, or I will just bend those flaps. Gotta bend those flaps too. And the template is ready for testing. And it looks like I got the circumference a little bit wrong. Like, uh, like those ends are a little bit apart, and uh, those uh, those flaps are a little bit skewed towards the center. So I, I will just need more. Uh, I will just need more between the centers and. 123 millimeters was probably wrong as well. So I better make another template. With uh, 125 millimeters. If not even more. Just uh, let me see how much do I have between the flaps. It's almost a centimeter. Let's make it less by eight millimeters. So if I'm uh, gonna make the gap uh, narrower by 8mm, I will have to add 8mm uh, here, ah, make it 7. So, let's make the hole 150mm, let's make the part in the middle 130mm, 
Let's leave those flaps at 10. Get it at 15 like it used to be. So now the the tricky part and I wonder why if this was 40 millimeters Hundred twenty-five. Yeah, <coughs> looks like I got something wrong. Silly cow, you got it wrong again. Anyway, let's uh, let's just cut out some more of this of this cardboard and. Work with a smaller piece. So given that the the whole the whole piece will be hundred fifty millimeters. And let's mark the 15. Mm, this might not be that straight anymore. Let's do it from the other end. The, the factory finished edge, uh, it would be better. But, uh, that's uh, that's why I make those templates. Like it's better to get it wrong on a template than on the working piece. And now it's time to calculate 
and uh, flaps. I will cut down the, the length of those flaps. I, uh, I can uh, cut the band uh, right now. And I can try if the if the clamp flats are are done right this time. And the moment of truth. Now it's almost no contact. But then those bends can be bent apart. So since there is no gap, I can just divide. Uh, I can just divide the the distance uh, in two. That would be sixty five plus uh, twice uh, twice thirty two point five. Sixty five from here, and let's verify. Uh, it is verified, so uh, eight millimeters from here, four millimeters from one side, and the other side. Same for the other one. Marking the center. Mm. 
And now it will be time to cut the cut the remaining part of the template. And I've got the, the template for the capacitor clamp and the flaps are uh, directly opposite to each other. Yeah, let's try with the amp. Then the capacitor placement uh, might be it might be slightly difficult, but by experimenting, I uh, I think I uh, I found the the right one. So now. It's just time to transfer the design to the material and cut it out. I have some good quality marker. And uh, there's a thing worth noting that those uh, those parts uh, at the inner corners uh, by the flaps, I rather drill a hole and then uh, cut uh, towards the hole rather than um, damaging the material. And uh, and weakening uh, the clamp. So it will be drilling time again. I may 
as well cut the, the piece of metal right now. I'll do the rough cut now and uh, all the precise cutting I will do later. And uh, this is what I wanted to show you. In the inner corner, there's a risk of damaging the, the metal. And uh, in order to prevent that risk, I will mark the, the hole with a center punch. Drill the hole. And then I will cut. And time to cut it. There's no risk of, of the scissors going into the metal. Now I will need to drill the, the holes where I need them. And I will do it by uh, putting the template against the working piece. Giving it a few punches uh, through the template. See? It 
it's time to smoothen those uh, those holes from the other side because they are pretty jagged. to to bend the flaps I will also use side cutters to make the make the corners a little bit duller then I will do some filing Of course, I will have to cut this one out as well. And of course, I will have to bend, bend the ends. I'd rather do it with long nose pliers. It's almost ready and this is the problem I was talking about if uh, if this is too wide but yeah just some finishing works and the capacitor clamp uh, will be almost perfect. Not as good as uh, the industrial made clamps, but this is how you can do if you if you don't have uh, a ready-made clamp. This is how you can make one uh, yourself. Finishing work now. Make it nice and smooth.
pretty nice. It's better and better. pretty small I think I can leave it this way so now it's time to clamp the capacitor and try uh, finding a way to attach it to the chassis or chassis <laughs> The bolt is pulling the the flaps uh, together. I might have to use uh, enlarged uh, washers uh, between uh, between the bolt and and the clamp. Determining the, the best placement of the cap. Uh, it will be something like this. I lift leave that marker and it's draining time again.
Deep bearing time again. look for those big washers one uh, use a different screw Let's put this into the chassis. Grinding some hardware. I think I could have uh, made a little bit larger holes, but uh, those will be okay. This one is pretty close, so I will use a smaller washer. Yeah, let's use uh, small washers on the outside and big washers on the inside. There it goes!
things those uh, those uh, locking nuts that's what I have around so I will use them without without washers remember about this one And attaching the capacitor in place and this is the main filter cap installed in the amplifier I, uh, I might be using some uh, some shims uh, between the capacitor and the uh, and the clamp because i can uh, i can rotate it uh, with my hand i want it to be securely attached but uh, that would be for this part and uh, i've got to mention that uh, I bought the alpha potentiometers for my amp but uh, when I was uh, designing this amp I, uh, I had different potentiometers in mind then the pots that have uh, 10 millimeter diameter shaft and this is uh, 8 millimeter shaft um, not shaft but, uh, but uh, mounting thread so what did I do? I just grabbed a piece of uh, plastic tube. This is uh, 10 millimeters outer, 8 millimeters inner, something like that. And I just cut um, a bunch of pieces of this tube <laughs> to make the shims so that uh, then the potentiometer goes right in the center. I might be cutting those shims down uh, just a teeny tiny bit or I might be counting on uh, on the pressure pushing them uh, slightly outwards making the centering uh, even better so that would be it for for this part of uh, the Dirty Dozen uh, Amp Building Project. So let's get back to the desk. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty fun to get back at uh, building an amp. After all those camera shenanigans, <laughs> right now um, I've got the uh, camera settings um, pretty conservative uh, because uh, I'm running it at uh, 1080p 30 
I think it was uh, 30 FPS at uh, MJPEG uh, encoding rather than uh, H.264. And uh, it hasn't hung up on me, but uh, that's... Uh, uh, that's the problem that I had with the camera with the Kio Pro, that um, uh, after some random time uh, it uh, it just uh, froze, uh, didn't want to get any signal. It's, it stopped working and I uh, sometimes I didn't even notice that um, it stopped working. Let's uh, take a look uh, at, the, at the camera again. And uh, right here, I just came up with an idea. What if I can make something that will signal that um, that the camera is still picking up the signal? So. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking about uh, making a uh, battery powered uh, blinken lights. Then I was thinking about uh, powering the blinken light uh, from uh, from the bench uh, 12 volt DC supply because I've got uh, a um, DC supply box. Uh, Right, uh, right where I uh, just uh, pointed. That's uh, for devices under test and and some uh, low voltage testing equipment or all that kind of stuff. But then I just realized that I've got this fume extractor, <laughs> and all it would take would be just uh, adding a. Uh, Blinking uh, LED and a uh, resistor to to the connections on the fume extractor switch, and uh, placing this uh, blinking light uh, fume extractor in the corner, just like uh, just like this. That's uh, all it takes. <laughs> I can uh, I can view the video feed uh, from my bench cam uh, sitting at the desk lo looking at OBS <laughs> and I can um, see that um, the video feed hasn't froze yet. And uh, after a few hours of uh, of running this little test I can confirm that uh, the video feed is still working. <laughs> so it's all about problem solving. Well, see you in the next episode of the M building project or maybe some other project in the meantime. Bye.